personally, um, because before the 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 incentives were renewed, it sure seemed scary. Um, but they were renewed, so you go on the assumption that that's taken care of. You also that that's not a tremendous issue from my my point of view because it, it is an emerging industry. It's an industry that's uh, that has high 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 cost issues. Yes, um, and that certainly does create risk for sure. But it's an industry that's creating an economy of scale that's driving down costs, that's moving ahead technologically, and that also has government support in that form. So one of the, one of the interesting things about government support is that it's, it's actually pretty much the most reliable way to fund a company. You know, government budgets don't never go away, and once you get entrenched with a government, a, a relationship with the government, you know, like the look at the Pentagon, right? Th there's no real cost issue with Pentagon spending. Um, it's reliable. So there's a certain perhaps limited analogy with solar and uh, solar and, and renewable energy. And, and if the government is motivated to support substitutes for oil, then it doesn't, then it, it it's not, uh, then the fortunes of those companies are not quite as reliant about whether oil goes up or down because if it's a strategic imperative, it's a policy imperative, then it trumps the price of oil, which, is, which would be something completely new, but it's possible uh, in the upcoming four years. Um, you, you need to look at what's happened with ethanol. Uh, you know, basically many ethanol companies are now bankrupt. And the, the, the big problem that they had from day one is their energy equation didn't work. So we may have only had a 20% energy gain of that going through making uh, ethanol from corn. So, and also, you know, there's other issues with the way um, uh, ethanol is coming into the infrastructure. With gasoline, it, it affects how the refineries are, are, are making, and it's created these, these imbalances with diesel and jet fuel. There's been all kinds of issues with, with ethanol. So you've really got to look at, you know, deeper in, into the issue and, and make sure that whatever you are investing in better be really efficient. We know wind's efficient right now. We know solar is getting more efficient. So, um, so just make sure, you know, you don't get get kind of the glaze in your eyes just because today, you know, there might be a profit margin. And even with ethanol getting this, um, I think it's a 50 cent or dollar per gallon subsidy, it's not working and co people have completely lost their money, including Bill Gates. So, Great. Another question? Right here. Exists in terms of oh thank you LA in terms of the the, the green economy. Um, on the one hand, we hear from Ed that there's public agency interest and local and state government interest in creating more um, green jobs and um, economic empowerment efforts. On the other hand, we hear from Andy that there's a dearth of venture capital and expansion capital. Um, available to companies. So how can we bridge the gap? What can we do as a community in a very concrete way to um, make Los Angeles more of a, um, a, a str the strong, contiguous community that we know it can be? Right. Good question. Um, anybody? Well, I'll give a wing. <laughs> You know, it sounds like there's this, you know, one of the things that I was involved with uh, in the past was this public-private partnerships uh, and a couple of other transactions in the past. And I, and I really think it's an important model, especially in today's times. I, you know, notwithstanding the fact that, you know, our public um, um, uh, Organ, you know, our, our public uh, uh, cities and states and uh, and and, uh, and even governments is running at a huge deficit. Assuming that they can still allocate budget for green initiatives, um, I think it's really important for there to be a, a private sector that could um, could partner with the public sector to bring intellectual. Uh, 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 um, uh, ability as well, private capital, and, and ingenuity. I mean, clearly the public uh, domain is not the greatest, most fertile uh, place for uh, innovation. So um, what I'd like to see happen um, locally is to see a, um, a public-private 
sort of uh, partnership get created, a stimulus of sorts that can be uh, that can really bring the two together. Because I think the private equity and the private investors are a little uh, reluctant to go it alone. And as Brett said, uh, in certain cases, and as well Ed, if uh, if we can get a real uh, a real support by the city uh, for an initiative, that I think it will attract private dollars, especially with a, a public backdrop to it. Um, so that's my stab at it. Anybody else? Well, don't forget that there are there are huge incentives. I mean, the state's talking, you know, is mandating 20% of energy from alternative fuels. The city is talking about 30%. Right. I mean, that's got to come from somewhere. So you have to balance off the short-term cycles and the in the in distortions in the economics of this business versus the long-term, where we know it's going to happen and it's got to happen. Thank you for the excellent uh, discussion. I have a question about opportunities that you see in service industries. Uh, Brett mentioned solar installation. What other uh, opportunities do you see in that area, or is it uh, a sector you're just less interested in because the margins uh, are, tend to be lower since, since they're service businesses? Well, I've got a quick one that, that I've uh, had a lot of interest in. Um, a friend of mine, that uh, Dan Sturgis, that uh, actually designed the original gem electric vehicles working on some um, electronic ways for people to check out um, bicycles and, and uh, motorized bicycles things like that they've got a huge system now in Paris uh, I think in Lyon that uh, allows people to just walk down the street they've got a, some kind of a card they, they stick it in the bike rack and they can take a bike and then just drop it off anywhere else in town. They've got a, an infrastructure like that. And, and kind of my idea is that, that um, you know, we tend to buy our vehicles um, so that it, it, it it's, it's, it's kind of matches the use that we'll only use a, a small amount of time. In other words, um, if someone's... Uh, typically just commuting to work all they need is you know a single passenger vehicle but then of course you know on the weekend they take their family around so then they need uh, four seats and then they go up to Mammoth and then they need an SUV you know for that time and you know pretty soon they're driving around you know six or seven thousand pound car um, and 95 percent of the time not using that and I think 99 percent of the energy goes into moving the car and only one percent the, the person in it um, in that case so what I was thinking about um, just this might be a little far out, but in terms of uh, community co-ops, where you, you know vehicles are, are more used as utility devices, and if someone could build an infrastructure, um, whether it's a co-op or whatever, where you can just have a car available for the use you're going to need it for for that that time, um, or you know smaller cars to bigger cars, where you can just use you know maybe it's your cell phone that okay's the code. I was thinking about even. If you're at the airport and walk out, what if someone dr drives up and they're dropping off their car and you just jump in and take it? And that, that that system actually in um, Philadelphia, right. something right. similar. Okay. I don't know if they have it in other cities. So, so, the, so there might be a lot of software, you know, it's got to go into making this happen. And I think especially when you look at um, um, GPS and the, and the ability to, to track those objects coming in and who's coming and, and then to vet you know, I want, only want to pick up a car maybe that's the guy has it pretty clean, and and that could be you know stuff. If he's got a five star. I'm gonna you know take it from him. So I think there's gonna be a lot of lot of opportunities like that um, to, that will save a tremendous amount of energy, and uh, and and help us all get around better too.